In the previous video, we talked about model validation by using data annotations. And these annotations are just attributes that are used on a single property of a model class. But what if there are more complicated logics that require us to look at multiple properties at the same time? In that case, we can create our own attributes and that's called validation attribute. So in this video, we're going to cover creating our own validation attributes. So the scenario that we're going to use is this for men's shirts, the size has to be greater than eight. Anything that is lower than eight is not valid for a women's shirt. The size has to be greater than six. Anything that is lower than six is considered invalid. Okay, so there's some kind of logic there that we have to use two or more different properties, combining them together to determine whether the input is valid or not. So this kind of validation will has to be done with custom validation attributes. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. Let's go to our solution and we have this models folder. Typically you're going to have multiple model classes under the model folder for validations. One way we can do it to organize these classes properly is to create a subfolder and we're going to call this folder validations and we're going to create validation attributes under this validations folder. So let's go ahead and create a new class. And I personally want to start the validation class with the name of the model class so that I know that I'm validating a shirt. And what I want to do is to ensure the correct sizing. So cor ensure correct sizing and I want to call it attribute. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to create an attribute so that I can use this attribute to decorate the size property like this. So what should I do to make sure this is a attribute? Of course, I have to derive from a attribute class. And in this case, it's not just any attribute class. It's called the validation attribute right here. And then what I need to do is to override the is valid method. I'm going to choose the second one that has the validation context. Okay. Let's go back to the shirt and let's do a control dot to import a namespace. I can see that this one is a valid attribute. In fact, I can remove the attribute and it's still working. So, Let's go back to our validation attribute. What we need to do is we need to get the model object from the validation context. So I'm going to say shirt and I'm going to say validation context dot object instance as a shirt. Why we are sure that this is a shirt because we are using this to decorate one of the properties of a shirt object. So that's why we are sure that this is going to be a shirt and therefore we can get the object instance directly from the validation context. So now I have a shirt object. I'm going to say if shirt is not now, then I'm going to implement the logic here. So the logic is if shirt dot gender equals to men. So I'm going to say ordinal ignore case. So if it's equals to men, then I have to make sure the size is greater or equal to eight. So shirt dot size. So if it's smaller than eight, then I'm going to return the error message. Okay, so I'm going to say return new validation result. And this error message is the size has to be greater or equal to eight. Let's make it clear. Let's say for men's shirts, the size has to be greater or equal to eight. And here I'm just going to validate women's shirt. Let me copy this and I'm going to change to six and change this one to women. Then I'm going to change this message to six and this one to women. And of course here you can see that it's warning us that this can be null. I'm going to say that if the shirt dot gender is not null or empty, then I'm going to do the comparison. Right? Otherwise this is going to be just a success validation result dot success. 
So after we complete the validation attribute, we can just take the attribute name and put it onto the most appropriate property. In this case, we're validating sizing. So therefore we're going to put this one here. Okay. I'm missing a if here, it's if, and now we can try this web API application. Let's run this and let's bring our postman here. In this case that we tested in the previous video. So before we can test, we need to change this mail to men. And then uh, we can test sizing. So size, we say three. I'm going to expect that it's going to say there's something wrong because the size is incorrect. Okay. It's telling me that for men's shirts, the size has to be greater or equal to eight. So let's use seven. Okay. Testing edge case. Then it's going to be testing. We're going to test eight. Now it's correct. Right. And then let's test another case. Let's say 80. That's a very big one. Uh, we should actually implement something to make sure that it's not going to be too big, right? But in this video, let's skip that. So it says 10 should be good. That's a normal case. All right. So let's change that to women for women. Number six should be good because it has to be greater than six, greater or equal to six. So that's fine. Right? But number five is not good. You can see that it's telling us it has to be greater than equal to six. And number seven is a normal test case. Okay, and let's test another one. Let's say number 12. This means that our validation attribute is actually working. And this video shows you how we can actually create our own validation attributes instead of solely relying on the data annotations. Okay. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next one.